Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today I have a special guest, uh, fellow employee Jackie Johnson. She works with the online sales and service department. Jackie, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, happy to be here. So Jackie, uh, tell me a little bit what you do with regards to fitting online in the company. Yeah, uh, last couple months I started working at Second Swing in June uh, and got into the online fitting department and so I fit everybody basically that cannot go to our stores, which is a lot of our customers. Uh, so I, I interview them, I ask what they're currently playing, what they're struggling with, what they like, what they dislike, miss hits, all that stuff to try to find the best fit for them. Okay, so finding the best fit for every single player is very important, whether you are a woman or whether you're a man. So a lot of conversation comes up with regards to fitting women for the right equipment. A lot of times women just get handed a golf club and say, hey, this is a woman's club, you should hit this particular club. That is not correct. So tell me a little bit about what clubs you play and your playing experience. Yeah, so uh, I played college golf at NDSU uh, and I currently coach high school golf right now. And I um, am a two handicap and, you know, which I play a lot of golf. Uh, and for me, the biggest thing for me has been, you know, getting something I feel comfortable with, getting something that I feel like I can really, uh, you know, gain a lot of yardage and or gain a lot of control with. So I currently play the AP2 Titleist. Yeah, and they are not women's golf shafts, correct? No, they are regular golf shafts. They are regular golf shafts. Yeah. Okay, so that's going to be important to know because every player has a different swing speed, whether you're a man or a woman. So you shouldn't just generalize a player and just saying, hey, hit this golf club because your woman should play a woman's golf club. Yeah, I mean, most of my friends in their, you know, between 20 and 30 years old, uh, none of them should be playing ladies golf clubs. I mean, their swing speeds are too high for that. And, you know, you know they're, they're athletic. So I think a lot of uh, women, especially in that age range, uh, need to be looking at something more of a senior to regular and sometimes even stiff shafts that are gonna better suit them. Yeah, so we have an exciting test today. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hand you this Ping GLE 7 iron. You're probably gonna give me a weird look <laughs> here. But I want you to hit this a few times and I wanna then go through a fitting process with you, hitting your gamer, comparing those numbers, and then going through the process and fitting you for the correct golf club based on your swing tendencies. All right, sounds fun. Sounds good? Yeah. All right, so for everyone that's watching here today, Really appreciate you watching. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to our channel. There's a subscription down, button down the bottom. Also give us a thumbs up, uh, like this video as well. So let's get after it and see some golf shots. So first, Jackie, I want to begin with you hitting some shots with a women's club. I'm gonna guess it's gonna feel a little bit lighter to you, but I just wanna get a general ballpark and take a look at some numbers and explain the differences between a woman's club and something that you would fit into better. So here's first is the Ping GLE2. All right. So if you get hit like five or six shots with that club, we'll take a look at some numbers and get some feedback from you. Definitely feels lighter. Definitely feels lighter? Okay. Yeah. Feels like I don't like have any control over it. Okay. Like, I don't know. Like I'm just kind of hitting and don't, can't really control the ball a whole lot. That's good feedback. And what distance do you normally hit your seven iron? Uh, about 140. 140, so it's going pretty close to that. Yeah. The, that last one carried 130 going 144. Notice that it like goes a little bit higher than seven iron that I have. Okay. As far as like ball flight. It's hit fairly solid as well. Okay, so the first thing I noticed here is you had a hard time turning that ball over. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice the dispersion over here on the right side, pretty consistent every um, single time. Your face angle, you're having a harder time leaving that, getting that club face to turn over. 
Uh, so that's kind of interesting to, to see that. The one thing I noticed as well is the inconsistency in spin rate. First one shot you hit was 4,400 RPMs. Next was like 5,900. Next was 37, 54, 56. So there was a little bit of inconsistency with regards to spin rate there as well. Um, you mentioned that it felt light. It felt harder to control. Yeah. Did it feel like to you that you just had a hard time hitting it straight, or did it feel like it was just a hard time getting ball go left? Um, I would say I normally hit my iron shots like pretty dead straight. So to like, like as soon as I hit it, I knew it was going right. Cause and but like there's no way for me to like really, like you were talking about with the club head, like for me to close that club head and like really get it to go a little bit straighter or even more of a draw. Like I had no, I feel like I didn't have any control because of the shaft and being so light and. I don't know. Yeah, that's the best I can explain it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. What uh, what is your typical bull flight when you do play? Um, I would say that especially with like my seven, six, and five iron, it goes pretty. I wouldn't say like low, but it's definitely a mid trajectory. Okay. Even my eight, nine, pitching wedge. I mean, nothing too crazy. Like I don't hit it high. Um, so I would just say mid. Okay. Um, so I want to jump back to the club speed numbers. Yeah. So just because you are a woman doesn't mean that you should be playing women's golf clubs. Uh, your club speed, very, very consistent, right around about 72 to 73 miles an hour. Typically in fittings, when I see the club speed in that 70 mile an hour range, I usually bring up the general idea that you would fit into more of a regular golf flex. Now that could be regular graphite or regular steel. I think you mentioned to me earlier, you're, you're currently playing regular golf shafts in your current irons, right? Yep. Yep. So regular graphite. Um, so we know right off the bat with regards to your club speed that women's flex for sure is not the right call there. So what I do want to do is I want to play around with the golf shaft a little bit yep. and see if we can get you in a little bit better golf shaft and also a club head as well. This is just not going to work out. No. It sounded to me like you had no control on it. We well, and make... two, it's, it's weird at address just because this is more of you know a forgiving club and it's got a thicker sole, so like more of a game improvement iron, whereas like mine are forged and more of a blade, so that part of it is already offsetting to me and offset, so to speak, as well. <laughs> That's just kind of throwing me off, too. Yep. Um, so those two things definitely were a huge factor as well. Yeah, that's very, very important. I know most women's clubs, they come with a little more game improvement. They have a decent mm -hmm. amount of offset, pretty large sole on them. Um, they're designed to get the ball up in the air. Uh, they're, they're forgiving. They're designed for the yep. players that have less club speed. You have more club speed, you don't have a problem so much getting bull up in the air and with making a good solid contact. So we need to fit you in a better club, a more player's iron club. So Jackie, you also brought your clubs in with you here too. So what I want to do is I want to test the woman's ping GLE irons versus your current gamers. There's probably a reason why you chose those clubs. Can you tell me why you chose those clubs and what you like about them so much? Yeah, so I got fitted when I went you know, to college in 2010 for the AP2s that just came out recently. Um, so those are what I played my whole college career, had those for, you know, 10 years. And this year, this summer, I decided that I needed, well, my grooves were all messed up. So I just upgraded my AP2s to the 716s a little bit um, and wanted to, you know, try those out, I guess. Um, I didn't get fitted for them. Guess I should have uh, in terms of seeing if that was the best fit for me, but I hit them pretty well. Uh, and then I just recently got fitted for the Sims um, for the other parts of my bag. So that's what I have right now. Okay. Well, why don't we get you to hit your current club? We'll compare it against the, yeah. the ping irons. And then since you haven't been fitted for a while, sounds like you just kind of went off old specs, mm -hmm. um, we can maybe try and find something even better and see how that works out. Sounds good. Okay.
So, first thing you'll notice is you did hit your current irons straighter than you hit the woman's club. We can see that white circle that was mm -hmm. the Ping GL E2, on average about 15 yards to the right. When we hit yours, we were a little bit straighter. It maybe didn't go quite as far, and that's a little bit to do with the loft on the club. AP2s have more loft than a Ping GL E2 because they're a little more game improvement iron. Um, that's part of the reason why the ball was spinning a little bit more and you lost a little bit of ball speed there. Um, but you did hit your irons more efficient, so 1.32 smash versus 1.29, and it was a little bit more consistent as well. So I did like that. With the heavier golf shaft, so the 65 regular graphite golf shaft that you have in your irons versus the basically 50 gram woman's flex, you did lose a little bit of club speed as well. I would also expect that. Lighter usually generates a little bit more speed there as well. But the big difference is definitely direction. So direction was a little bit harder there for you to turn the ball over with the Ping uh, GLE2. Um, we lost about six or seven yards. So I feel like we're right in between. So your club speed's hovering in the low 70 mile an hour mark, mm -hmm. I wouldn't put you in a stiffer golf shaft than, than regular, but I also wouldn't put you in a woman's flex either because you already told me, hey, this thing feels too whippy. I feel like I can't control it at all. So we're kind of in between. So a lighter regular golf shaft. I want to test a couple of different options here, here and see what we can do to improve on these numbers. Sounds good. Sounds good? Yeah. When you're playing, well, so what, first off, what's your handicap? A two. You're a two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's the strength of your game? Uh, I'd say driving and my chipping. Driving and chipping. Yep. Now, I noticed you didn't mention iron play. Yeah. So would you be opposed to playing just something just a little bit more forgiving than the AP twos? Yeah, I definitely. I, I mean, I think. For me, I definitely notice the loft difference, like especially when I'm playing with other people and they're hitting you know, seven iron, 150 yards, and mine's going 135, 140. Um, I know a lot of it has to do with the fact that I'm losing that because of, you know, and I know there's a lot of options out there in terms of something that's not a game, game improvement, but not maybe something that's a real player's iron. So a little bit more forgiveness wouldn't be a bad thing, so. Okay, and then offset, you mentioned that in the, when you first initially looked at the Ping G, G Alley 2, you obviously like the look of a little bit more player's iron. Yeah. So I'll try and find something that doesn't have nearly as much offset as a, the G Alley 2 head. Yeah. So I'll grab a couple of different iron heads and we'll test those with the same golf shaft and see how they work out. Sounds good. Okay. All right, so when you're ready, that's, yep. uh, that's hit five shots with the T200. Yep. And see how those numbers compare. All right. So let's take a look here at the differences between T200 and um, your current clubs, and then also we'll take a look at the ping as well. So first thing on the right, you can see instantly you picked up a little bit more, a lot more carry distance between the two of them and, and also total distance as well. So we were consistently getting you over 140 yards. So that is exciting. The efficiency went up as well. So your efficiency was higher with the T200, but the big difference is ball speed. So we picked up six miles an hour more ball speed versus the 716 AP2, which is essentially gonna pick you up some more distance. Not only did you pick up a little bit more distance, but you're able to get that spin rate down a little bit there for you as well. Um, if we take a look here, even though you had less loft on the golf club, it didn't fly any lower at all. It actually flew the exact same height. So 74, 75 feet in, in the air as well there too. So big difference. Loft was helping you with regards to a little bit less spin. 
there, but also if you're, if you're trying to pick up a little distance and keep up with your friends that you know hitting it around the 140, 150 mark, it's a good option. So right off the bat, you can see that forgiveness was maybe a little bit better as well, and mm -hmm. you picked up some distance. How do those uh, T200 feel compared to the other two models yet? Good. I mean, to be honest, like the feel of them feels actually very similar in terms of when I hit the ball on my AP2s, like that feel feels relatively the same, but like I can feel the difference in the shaft, like the like being able to swing a little hard. It doesn't feel too light, yep. but for you know, for what it's worth, it definitely feels like I can get after it more and then I can swing a little bit harder with it. So okay. it was interesting to see. Yeah, so this was still a regular graphite golf shaft. It's going to have very, very similar weight to what you've got on your current uh, golf shaft as well. Um, but the difference was you're picking up a little bit more ball speed and a little bit more forgiveness with T200 versus the AP2s. Yeah. Got one more I want to throw at you. So got TaylorMade P790 irons. Also got a 65 gram regular golf shaft in here as well. Want to compare that. And then we'll take a look at some numbers as well. That was hit well too. Okay, uh, first thing I want to touch on is look. So you hit the T200 and you hit the P790. How did the look on those feel or look compared to the 716 AP2s that you're currently playing? Did you well, notice? Well, the T200 the look? definitely. I mean, they look very similar. Yep. Um, at a dress, so that was a little bit more like comfortable look-wise. But honestly, like with these, I mean, they're a little bit thicker in the sole. Just like at a dress, the top line is a little bit thicker too. But it. It doesn't bother me. It actually made me feel like I could crank it a little bit more because I know it's going to be a little bit more forgiving. So yeah. that, that confidence of knowing that I'm probably going to hit a good ball strike with it was different. Like I didn't, I didn't, it's definitely not like the GLE, um, like in terms of how, you know, wide it looks or how forgiving it looks. This is a little bit in between, but I liked it. Yeah, so it was kind of a, like I said, a good in-between, probably best of both worlds, a little bit more forgiving, but at the same time doesn't look nearly as large and have as much offset as a game improvement iron right. would have there right. as well. So distance players iron category for sure has been a great addition to, to help golfers games in the last two or three years. There's been some great developments there as well. The biggest thing I noticed with this is just the ball speed. The ball speed on average was over 100 miles an hour. The first swing you had, I, mean, I was really hoping you'd get you over 100 miles an hour ball speed was 103.5. Big, big difference. So your carry distance was you know, quite a bit further as well. So five yards further. But the most important thing, and I know you mentioned you, that you like your kind of your mid trajectory. Yeah. Um, but for me, I wanted to pick up a little bit more height because I want you to be able to stop the ball on the green. If we're spinning the ball a little bit less than what we are with your current iron, so notice we're spinning at about 1,000 RPMs less, mm -hmm. we still need to have that stopping power. So we need to get that ball to stop on the, on the green. To get there, we need height. So I always like to take a look at this landing angle. And if I see that landing angle getting you know, under 45 degrees, we, we need more spin and we need a club that's going to get the, the landing angle over 45 degrees. When we hit the T200, we'll notice it dropped. So it dropped to 44.2. When you're hitting yours, it was a little bit higher, but because it was spinning a lot more and you're getting much ball speed, you just weren't hitting the ball as far. So 121 going 128. We jump to the P790s here, you were carrying the ball 140 going 150. So that's it's 20 yards that you picked up there as well. And you weren't really swinging the ball too much. You weren't really swinging the club too much faster. It was about two to three miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, but the big difference here is efficiency. The 137 efficiency, um, it, was just, it was just really, really solid. I always like to look at these little numbers down the bottom. 
that spin rate at 5300 plus or minus 177 was much more consistent there as well. So I was impressed with P790, just the fact that we're able to get the consistency and height to help you out as well. Yeah. And then we can take a look and see you're basically hitting it dead straight every single time there as well. So a lot of times I like to ask people, hey, which, which circle do you like up there? Which color do you like better? Uh, the blue. The blue. By blue, far. Blue, blue for sure make, makes sense. Um, the ping GLE, the women's club, was consistently to the right. Yours was fairly straight, but it was quite a bit shorter. Now we've got the T200 that was kind of in between, and then the P790 smallest circle, so dispersion was definitely the best. Carry and total going quite a bit further there as well. So from what I've seen, you were hitting that graphite 65 regular golf shaft pretty solid. Like your efficiency was really, really good. I don't really see an advantage to trying a steel golf shaft unless you really want to maybe consider and, and, and test it. How do you how do you feel about maybe testing or? Whatever? Yeah, I mean I've never personally like tested a steel sh shaft and. I know a couple different ladies that do play steel shafts, so I wouldn't mind just seeing like the differences and the numbers in regards to that. Okay, so why don't we put in a, a lighter weight steel golf shaft and kind of just test the numbers and see how it performs versus that graphite shaft. Sounds good. So we know that last one was a little bit of a, a miss hit. We didn't hit any miss hits with the, with the graphite golf shaft there as mm -hmm. well. How did the steel shaft feel compared to the graphite? Yeah, I would say in terms of like overall like forgiveness, you could definitely feel that in the graphite. And like when I would hit down on the ball with the graphite versus the steel on a, like even that miss hit, I could kind of feel that like ricochet up my arm um, with the, I mean, I didn't really do a whole lot of miss hits with the graphite, but even like with my current ones with the graphite, you don't really feel that. Like, it's just kind yeah. of like, you know, you know, you make a miss hit just based on uh, where it hits the face. But in terms of the feel from impact on the ground, you don't, I mean, you don't really feel that. So that's the advantage of graphite in my opinion. Um, in terms of like, other performance factors like I noticed the weight a little bit but like honestly I the only thing I really noticed was the miss hit um, in terms of how that felt so yeah. otherwise it was there wasn't a whole lot of difference um, in my in my opinion so okay. so speaking of that miss hit I was generous I took it away so that's that one that's flashing just a little bit, a little bit shorter. Yeah. Um, I wanted to kind of talk about your, your better strikes and, and compare the, the numbers. The challenge I have with the steel golf shaft versus the graphite golf shaft is these two columns right here. So height and landing angle. We notice 72 feet in the air. That was the lowest average height that you hit now, if I kept in that slight miss hit as well, it would have been even lower, but it was consi considered quite a bit lower. I mentioned landing angle being important because we want to have stopping power. Your landing angle was also the, the lowest with that, um, with that steel golf shaft there as well. So mm -hmm. yes, you were hitting it solid. You would notice it was your second highest ball speed of the day. Very efficient, 137, 137. So very, very, you hit it well. You lost just a little bit of distance, about four yards, um, but you sacrificed a little bit in height with the heavier steel golf shaft there too. And also you lost just a little bit of club speed. So your efficiency was great, but you did lose about 1.3 miles an hour club speed with the steel golf shaft. And this is all stuff that I would have exactly expected to happen. Mm -hmm. um, I would say you're like, you're like in between. So there is a golf shaft that I would recommend to consider also if you were trying to play with the idea of steel, if you feel like out, out on the golf course you maybe swing a little, little bit faster or anything like that. 
You know, steel fiber is a, is a great option. It's kind of like an in-betweener in there as, as well. But from what I'm seeing is graphite, I don't know if you're going to get better than what you were hitting. And there's a reason why you played that 65 gra graphite regular golf shaft in your irons for a few years. So you know you're comfortable with it. And it, it gave you a nice comfort level as opposed to playing something that was 20 grams heavier. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. I think I, I like the feel of graphite shafts personally. Um, you know, I've hit, you know, my guy friends with their clubs and they all have, you know, steel shafts and you know, obviously it's going to be stiff or extra stiff or whatever, but I, I like the feel of graphite. I feel like I can kind of really attack the ball just because of the lightweight. And so for that, I, I, I'd prefer it, but yeah. Yeah. And this is different for everyone. And it's not just different because I'm not saying you should play a graphite shaft because you're, you're a woman. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying because you don't quite have enough speed there to get that ball high enough. Now, if I had a woman come in that with that club speed being closer to kind of 80 miles an hour, that's when I maybe throw in that, in, that, in that steel shaft and say, hey, let's just see what happens. Let's check out the control on it. Your control was great. You were hitting it nice and straight. So mm -hmm. that didn't change. But what you did sacrifice with playing the steel golf shaft was the height and that landing angle. I mentioned 45 degrees. That's a great number to consider with a seven iron. But if it's not quite high enough, it's going to come into the green a little bit low and you're sacrificing your potential distance and stopping power. Yeah. So that was a fun test. I picked you up about 20 yards on your current seven iron. You pretty happy with that? Oh yeah. I mean, it was, I, it's crazy how much little things can matter in terms of forgiveness, in terms of just club selection in general from different manufacturers and, and the specs on, you know, the shaft. I mean, there's a lot of things that come into play, but I never would have thought I would gain 20 yards. Yeah, so the most important thing is you picked up the yardage so you can keep up with your friends on the golf course, but we didn't sacrifice that by losing height. We actually picked up height, so that's why playing that P790 iron that gave us about eight to ten feet higher trajectory is going to give you a little bit more stop and power. So even though the ball was spinning just a little bit less, it's still going to get up in the air and it's going to flat land soft for you, and you didn't lose any stop and power at all. Yeah. So it was exciting. I'm 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 happy to not you know 20 yards with a seven iron is a big deal. So yeah, it's a big difference for sure. So and we're not playing a women's golf club, so that's <laughs> kind of the most important thing there no. as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, so these were, this was a great result. Um, I'm excited to see you maybe make the switch and see how they perform. Definitely, definitely thinking about it now. So whether it's in-store with a club fitting or online with our sales and service team, Second Swing has some great options for you with regards to getting fit for the right equipment. So come on in and uh, or give us a phone call or chat to us online and we'll be more than willing to help you out. Jackie, thanks for joining us. Yeah, no problem. I loved being here. <laughs>